Hello, this is Mary Costello from Florida. Uh, today we're going to be discussing uh, several issues that uh, may arise when you are using your dental dam. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some of these um, issues. There may be several reasons for dental dam leakage. Uh, for example, stretching, forgetting to stretch the dam off the wings of a clamp. Uh, when you're punching the holes in your dental dam, if your spacing is inadequate, uh, that will cause leakage. Um, perhaps also uh, incorrect hole sizing uh, that's punched and um, the dam is not properly inverted. Uh, finally, uh, you may have forgotten to check the dentitions for malposed or missing teeth. It's very important to um, isolate uh, with ease and consideration as the dam can stretch and pull in areas uh, if it doesn't align with the existing dentition. And we'll also talk about ways that you can repair a minor leakage. When you uh, remove the dental dam off the wings of the clamp, the best way to do that is to take the side of a composite instrument and just roll it off just like that. And on the lingual, usually there's room, you can just pull it sideways until it clears the wing. So it's very important that you remove the dam in this manner. Otherwise, if you were to place the instrument in this manner poking the dental dam you can tear the material and then of course when we're working with this we're working from the front to back you can see I already have some of the material in place and I'm going to use some wax dental floss to carry the rest of the dental dam through the contact area and you'll notice that I'm using the flossing technique I call the loop technique and what that does is that it makes you more proficient in getting the material through because I'm looping the floss through the contact and coming back through the same contact. There we go. So the other thing too is when we mentioned about punching your holes, one thing I wanted to show you is that uh, there are templates and stamps that are available and the spacing between these holes are meant to be this distance because you need enough material to invert and cover the interdental uh, papillae. Otherwise, you're going to have leakage. Um, we also have a stamp that you can stamp the dental dam, but make sure you use a permanent ink and not a water-soluble ink. Otherwise, there'll be ink all over the place. And so that is another issue that can cause leakage if your spacing is incorrect. Uh, the other thing is uh, when you're applying your dental dam, you want to make sure that the material is down between the teeth. Your interceptal dental dam must be thoroughly between the interproximal areas. So one thing I do is I'll go back with some dental floss and I'll basically floss the interproximals. I'm reflossing it really is what I'm doing. And so if that doesn't do it, Oh, incidentally, while well, suction everything dry, I'm, what I'm showing you is how I work when I'm working by myself. And so um, making sure that the dental dam material is, um, is down thoroughly, and that's one thing I do. Now, if I run into difficulty with inversion still, there's another technique where you can use some dental floss and you're going to wrap it around the tooth surface, such as this, and you're going to tuck the material down on the lingual and cross the floss on the facial, gently tucking it. And come back out, and you can go on to the next tooth. By the way, see, even I'm not perfect. See what I did? My whole size, I should have punched uh, in the non-latex dental dam, you really should punch one hole size smaller than what's recommended. I inadvertently punched the, the normal size hole. And uh, you can see right here where the this is not going to invert very well. See right here? That's because I punched the hole too large. Uh, let me show you. You see here on the punch table, for example, 
a standard Ainsworth style punch has five holes. Normally, the five holes for the anchor tooth, which is the tooth that receives the clamp, uh, the four is for molars, uh, the three is for premolars and canines, and the number two is for the upper anterior. Number one is for the lower anterior. But when we're, with working with non-latex product, because the modulus of elasticity has been adjusted, uh, the material stretches much more readily. So consequently, I punch the three hole instead of punching the two hole. Um, excuse me. I am punch the two hole instead of the one hole for the lower. And uh, unfortunately, there's not a smaller hole than the one. So, but I, I in inadvertently punch the two incorrectly. So that's what happens uh, when you don't punch the correct size holes. So as I was showing you, uh, you can either uh, do a, a, a continuation of, of that flossing technique that I was showing you, where we uh, wrap the floss around the cervical area, holding some tension on the floss, tucking on the lingual aspect of the tooth and then gently tucking on the facial and you can either remove the floss or you can go on to the adjacent tooth and perform the same procedure. This particular trick works very nicely when you have trouble inverting and usually it's the canine that that is the problem. And then we can just remove the floss in that manner. So when you're dealing uh, with uh, leakage, uh, as I mentioned, another issue is checking the dentition. Now, obviously, our patient has perfect dentition. But let's say if the tooth was uh, somewhat to the lingual in, in uh, inclination, then you would have to punch your hole accordingly so that the dam wouldn't pull and tear in such a manner to cause leakage. Obviously, if there's a missing tooth or uh, let's say there's a greater spacing than, than usual, you have to compensate by punching it accordingly, uh, making enough uh, coverage for that space so you don't get leakage. Now, in repairing a leak, uh, there's a product called Oral Seal Dental Dam Caulking. They also make a putty. The putty is a little thicker than the caulking, but essentially it comes in a syringe. And if you have a minor, like say a minor leakage here, I could just place a little bit of the material on the dental dam and it'll seal it. It's the, the material is specifically designed to adhere to dental dam material. So when, when you've um, lubricated like you have, and this stuff will stick even when it's uh, been lubricated, or um, really is that lubrication is pretty well maintained under the... The, well, basically, the, the water-soluble lubricant that I used, it kind of dissolves okay. in, the, in the saliva anyway. Sure. Uh, it's a surgical jelly, basically. But um, um, this material will adhere to a wet surface. That, oh, that's the okay. whole idea right. of, the, of the caulking material. Uh, and, and, and it does seal, it will seal that surface. So uh, it, this is a minor little issue here. And uh, that can be, you could just squirt a little bit of material right in here and that'll seal that up.